we give God glory, honor. This is our SMS service, panel prayer, panel city prayer palace. This is where we meet God face to face. My name is Pastor Michael Kwame Nwagbon. Honored to bring you God's mind on this. Our SMS service is a Sunday evening and we give God honor and praise for gathering us together under his shadow and uh, bringing us back. You went through your various days activities. You went um, to church, you, you fellowship with church on the, on the screen. And then um, it's time for us to dive deeper into the special miracle service. And I want you to get somebody reminded, call a friend and tell the friend that um, we have just begun. The Pennell City Prayer Palace page is on. We are also on Facebook, we are on YouTube, we are on Twitter, we are on Instagram. Look for us and share with this fellowship as far as you are. Let's get into the into family. And though then the WHO is saying there is a, a social distance, but we believe that there is no burial in the power of God and in the presence of God. And so get everybody connected. Let's get on this virtual um, connection and, and minister the word of God to everybody. I'm excited to be the one God who use my vocal organs to reach you where you are. Can we pray as you get your friends connected this particular moment? Eternal Father, we thank you. We commit the airways into your hands. We ask that Lord take absolute control. Let your name be glorified in this season and in this moment. I ask for fresh impact. I ask for fresh grace. I ask that anybody tuning in right now would be blessed. Touch these lips of clay. Touch the ears that hear me. Let this time be a blessing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We give God praise and glory. We are looking at the ingredient of the will of God in prayer. We have established in our previous lessons about prayer. Pennell City is a, prayer, it's a church on prayer. And so we looked at what prayer is. We defined that prayer is talking to spirit, either positive or negative. Whether it's a good spirit or it's a bad spirit, we said prayer is earthly license for heavenly intervention. Bible said, open your mouth wide, I will feel it. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So prayer is an essential thing that necessitates God's presence or God's will to participate in the heavens affair understand also that prayer in prayer we don't inform god we he knows about it but in prayer we involve god so to make your prayer potent to make your prayer powerful to make your prayer effective there are certain ingredients that are needed to be established in your prayer and so the first ingredient we looked at was the ingredient of faith we also looked at the ingredient of desire we looked at the ingredient of the name of jesus we looked at the ingredient of sacrifice then we are now looking at the ingredient of the will of god so for today we shared in the afternoon the basis or what we say the will of god is so i'm continuing on the will of god so our key scripture is in john chapter first john chapter five first john chapter five verse 14 to verse 15 that is we are looking first john chapter 5 verse 14 to verse number 15 and he says and this is the confidence we have towards him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us and if we know that he hears us whatever we ask we know that we will have our request granted wow so god is telling us that our confidence is in the fact that we are when we pray according to his will so he has a will so if we fulfill our prayer according to his will then that which we are asking we shall have in matthew chapter 20 sorry matthew chapter 7 verse 21 matthew 7 21 bible is saying that not everybody that says lord lord will have access into the kingdom but is the one who does the will of god so on this basis what is the will of god what is the will of god that will guarantee me to enter god's presence will guarantee me to be a candidate for heaven what is the will 
of God. And so we are establishing right now that the will of God or the divine plan of God or the divine will of God is the actual is actually the concept of God. When we say the will of God, I mean the concept of God or the intent of God, what God had at the back of his mind, what was God's original plan, what was his original plan, or I would say that, what was his main draft, what was the rough sketch that God did concerning an issue. So if I want to pray by God's will, Bible says in James chapter 4, he says we pray and we don't have, simply because we, our desires and our will are not not aligned in the plans of God and as long as it's not aligned in the plan of God in the will of God we will do verbaging prayer we will be we will be shouting and screaming sweating and nothing will be done because we are not praying in alignment to the will of God and so when we say the may, we say the will of God or the concept of God, we are talking about the plan of God. The plan of God. What is the plan of God? He said, my plan for you is to bring you to an expected end. So what is the plan of God? We are also looking at that same thing that means that the purpose of God. And the word, the purpose of God drives me to this scripture in Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26 from verse number 12 running to verse number 12. 18 Acts 26 from verse 12 to verse 18 and listen to this fabulous scripture this was where Paul was given an opportunity to speak to King Agrippa and address King Agrippa and the Emperor Felix on an issue that has to do with him in prison and listen to what Paul said he said in Acts chapter Acts chapter 26 verse 12 running to verse 18 he said in this connection I journeyed to Damascus with the authority of the chief priest that I may persecute those which are on the way let's jump to verse number 16 he said but immediately I saw a light coming from heaven struck me on the ground then he said but when I stood on my feet he said to me for I have appeared to you for this purpose god now speaking to paul he said i have appeared to you for this purpose i have appeared to you for this plan i have this drafted design for your life why i came the intent why i striped you the intent why i terminated your journey the intent why i made you what you are is for this purpose what was the purpose it says that that you will be a servant to preach and witness my word and deliver my word to the Gentiles to whom I have also sending you and I will open your eyes so that you will see you will see great things about God and you will see the power of God that is fighting against the work of the enemy so what was God's intention for saving Peter, what was God's intention for saving Michael? What was God's intention for saving Araba? What was God's intention for saving your life? There is an intent, there is a purpose. You are not just a medical doctor, you are not just a lawyer, you are not just a, a businessman, you are not just an engineer. God has a purpose until you know the will until you understand the will you will miss you will do all that you will miss you will you will you will misuse what you have some um, elderly person put it this way when purpose is not known abuse is inevitable when you don't know a will of a thing, you don't know the reason why a thing is made, abuse is inevitable. So you will find out in life that all the time, the enemy's intention, what he does is that he makes you miss the purpose. So what is the will of God? There are, there are two gardens we spoke about the other day. The garden of Eden and the garden of Gethsemane. And in those two gardens, you see will at display you see will at work and you see will working in the garden of Eden where in that garden the will of Adam was working then in the garden of Gethsemane the will of God superseded the will of man and so we ended by saying that I'm going to show you in scripture the will of God 
the will of God. How do I walk in the will of God? Understand that there are various kinds of will. Various kinds of will. Can we take time to run through those wills right now? Number one, we have what we call the will of other people. The will of other people. You know, people have their will concerning your life. They have their own perception about your life. One day Paul was on the sea. He had a shipwreck, came out from the sea, went to a place they had gathered fire for the firewood for them. They had surrounded the firewood. He decided to add more wood to the fire. So whilst he picked the wood around and he put it in the fire, a snake came out and tied to his hand. And Bible said that the people who were watching, they looked at him and said, this guy is an evil man. He escaped the sea. Then he came to the land. And the God of the land still didn't spare him. The God of the land, which is a viper on the land of mortar. The spirit they believe that was controlling mortar was the spirit of a viper. And if the spirit of the river or the spirit of water or the spirit of the sea has spared him, he couldn't escape the God of the land. And so viper had tied his hand. And everybody was expecting that this guy Paul would fall down and die. So people have their expectation about you. There are times when people see your color and they see the, the kind of person you are. They grow immediately. They have their perception about you. When they know that what tribe you come from, what family do you come from, which part of the continent you come from, immediately you, you'd say, I am a Nigerian or I am a Ghanaian. I am from Inzima. I am a Ghanaian. I'm from the Volta region. I am a Ghanaian from the north. Immediately you say, I'm a Kenyan. I'm a Liberian. I'm from America. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. The moment you say it other people develop a concept about you they develop a design concerning your life they have other people's plan about your life there are people who can even look at you and say because you are 50 years old you cannot marry or because you are 50 years old and you are almost at retirement or you are 60 years old you are on retirement you can't start a new business but I came to tell you that KFC when you go and buy chicken and chips, KFC, the man started his business after he had gone on retirement. And today he's a world brand. So it's possible that God can do something even at when other people's will and design for your life has been designed. We have other people's will. Parents have will concerning their children. Children have plans for their own lives. But I lift up prayer for somebody on this SMS service that whatever is the will of other people to shut you down, whatever is the will of other people to destroy your life, whatever is the will of other people to break you down, I command right now, let that will of other people be terminated. Let that will of other people be cut off. Let the will of other people be crushed in the name of Jesus Christ. Other people's will. We have what I call corporate will. So we have other people's will. We have corporate will, corporate plan, corporate design, corporate intent. This is why we said the company. This is the time we must come to the company. And so when you go to that company, you are supposed to dress in a particular way. You are supposed to come at a particular time. You report to work at a particular time. You close at a particular time. And it, it, it is a corporate design. But somebody hearing me right now, that corporate plan concerning your life, that corporate design concerning your life, that corporate agenda concerning your life, if it is meant to destroy you, I command that the fire of God enter that corporate design, Amen. enter that corporate plan. Amen. We command the fire of God Amen. to come upon that corporate plan Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I command right now, Amen. whoever is listening to me, that is plagued and the corporate plan, that is plagued and the corporate intention, that is played uh, and the corporate will I command right now let the fire of God come over your corporate, Amen. come over that company Amen. come over that will, Amen. come over that intent, Amen. come over that purpose Amen. I command in the name of Jesus Amen. let the purposes of the enemy let the plan of the enemy catch fire now Amen. oh for one minute where you are, clap your hands and release fire, clap your hands and release fire over anything, over any plan, over any 
program in the public plan against my land. I command, receive fire. Receive it. So we have other people's will, corporate will, then we have Satan's will. Satan's will. Satan's will is the plot, is the design, is the purpose, is the intent, is the program of the devil. Mm. And so he has a plan for your life. Satan has three agendas for everybody. Everybody. Wherever you are, Satan has three agenda for you. The agenda is John 10, 10. He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Everybody, that's a plan for Satan for your life. So Satan comes into your life for these three main reasons. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. This particular day at SMS, I declare over your life any assignment of the enemy, any plan of the enemy to steal your joy, to steal your life, to rob you, to destroy you. I command right now, let that purpose of God, let that purpose of the enemy, let that plot of the enemy, let that design of Satan, let it catch fire. Amen. Fire. <coughs> Satan has a plan. And so you see somebody that is trained in the house, groomed in the fear of God, grows and becomes a smoker. He goes on hard drugs. And the parents say, I didn't train my child like this. Satan has a plan. But I pray for you today. Any satanic agenda mm. for your children. Any satanic agenda for your own life. Any satanic agenda for what God has designed for you. I command right now. In the name above every name. The name Jesus Christ. Let the fire of God Amen. enter that design. Amen. Enter that projection. Amen. Anything of Satan Amen. that wants to destroy you. Destroy your children. Destroy your seed. I command right now. Let that satanic agenda receive fire. Receive fire, receive fire, receive fire, receive fire, receive fire, receive fire. I crush satanic agenda. Jesus. Satan has a will. One day he appeared in a bargain with Jesus and was bargaining for Peter. And Peter, Jesus came to Peter and said, I had a meeting with the devil, and Satan have desired. That he will sift you like wheat. I pray for you today that any 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 backside meeting, any meeting they did at your backside that you have no idea about at your blind side, you never saw it coming, and they plotted evil. I command today, let that plot catch fire. Amen. Let that intention catch fire. Amen. Let that design catch fire. Amen. We command right now, let the evil projection of Satan, let what he desires to do for your life, I command that this SMS right now, let that intention catch fire Amen. now. Satan has a will. Then we have the will of a man. So we have others' will, corporate will, we have Satan's will, then we have a will of a man. So you as a man, you have a will. You as a person, you have a design. You as a person, you have a plot. You have a plan, you have a purpose. But listen, it is not always your plan that supersedes or tells the case. But there is another will that is most powerful I love to introduce you to. It's called the divine will. Mm. Amen. And so if you are watching right now, just text it. Say divine will. Just type divine. it divine will. Divine, divine will. I like that song that says that. Namado diawodo. Namaye niawope. Oh, somebody that didn't understand the vernacular. And because you have lived all your life eating pizza in abroad, I'm saying that Namado Diawodo Namaye Niawope What I'm saying is that that I will love that which you love. And I will like that which you like. And I will stay where you stay. Because Lord, this is what is my heart desire. My groaning, my yearning is that I will be where you are. Uh, and the Englishman says it and says, I just want to be where you are. Dwelling daily in your presence. I just want to be la la la. 
la 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 oh michael michael has missed it but, but, but i declare to you right now that that just like the psalmist said in some in some 42 he said as the deer pinted for water so does my soul pines for thee i pray this particular day i speak this particular moment that you will fall in alignment with divine purposes Amen. and divine plan when there is a divine plan and there is a divine will divine wills are in three dimensions number one we have what we call the permissive will of god the moral will of god and the sovereign will of god the permissive will of god the moral will of god and the sovereign will of god what is the permissive will of god is that which he gives you because you forced it he permits you, but not, it's not really his desire. Then we have the moral will of God, which is that which makes him what he is. He makes you get that thing because it makes you look at him just as he is. And the third one, that is the sovereign will of God. I want to read Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 11. That is what I call the sovereign will of God. In him, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. In him we obtain an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to his counsel. So you are where we are. We can inherit what we can inherit. We can have what we can have because it has been predetermined. It is the sovereign will of God. He has already programmed it he has already designed it he has made sure that this is what i want to let it happen and so he says that in him we obtain our our, our inheritance having been predestined according to the purpose of god who works all things according to the counsel according to his counsel so we understand here that god has a design he has a purpose he has a plan pastor michael i understand what you are saying but my question is how do i know that what i am going through or how do i know that this thing i am praying about is in god's will how and this is a very huge question but let's look through the bible and try to and digest it right now number one I can know that this is the will of God according to Psalm 37 verse number 4 to verse 5. Psalm 37. Psalm 37 verse 4 and verse 5. It says, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him. And he will act it so how do i know i'm walking in the will of god number one listen to your heart <laughs> you see if jesus is the lord and savior of your life what is in god's heart is your heart beat because listen even you yourself your own heart you can be deceived by it what's like what do you mean yes you can be deceived by your own heart. You can think your heart is telling you one thing, but it's a different thing. How do I know this? In, in Jeremiah chapter 17, Jeremiah 17, verse number 9 and 10, it says that the heart of man is desperately deceitful and desperately wicked. Two things. The heart of man is desperately deceitful. The heart of man can deceive you. And the heart of man is wicked. A certain a certain group of people pronounce it as a wicked. So you are you are you are they are deadly. The heart of man is deadly. But Bible says that it says the heart of man is that he said who can understand it? But look at verse number 10. He says that God, verse 10, <clears throat> Jeremiah 17, verse number 10, he says that, but God searches the heart. The place that you yourself can deceive is deceived you. That is where God searches. So, number one, how do I know I'm walking in the will of God? I must listen to my heart. Now, because God searches the heart, number two, number two, 
in John chapter 10, in John chapter 10, verse 27, listen to what he says. He said, my sheep hears my voice and I, and I know them. So what Bible is saying in this context is that when we want to know the will of God, you must not only listen to your heart, but you must listen to the spirit of God. So listen, he said, my sheep hears my voice. If I want to take time and break down what it means by my sheep. Now, in the olden days, when shepherds like five or ten different kind of shepherds come together to keep their sheep at a particular field to take care of them over the night and the following morning, they go out into the places of their, um, going to look for grass to feed their sheep and they are going to look for food um, to take care of them. Whatever they are going to, when a particular shepherd comes to the huge number of animals that are gathered, the shepherd has a particular sound it makes and when it makes that sound all those animals that belongs to him move and start following him and so that was the concept which bible said that my sheep hears my voice so if you are a child of god and your heart is with god you will hear the voice of god listening to the voice of god what is god saying is it is it i need a car do you need a car because everybody has got a car you okay I, I need to marry is it because everybody is married or i need to travel is it because everybody is traveling what is the will of god listen to it what is god saying what is the direction of God for my life? Abraham had gone to Egypt first time. He went to Egypt the second time. And now in the, in the, in, when he had given birth to his son, his son also was ready to go to Egypt. And so when he was ready to go, God said, don't go, stay here. Stay here and I, I will bless you. Bible said, and, 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 and some say, sorry. And, and Isaac stayed in that same place and he planted and God gave him hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold. I pray for you that you will hear the voice of God. Amen. He said, come to me, walk in the old path, stand at the junction and ask, where is the path of the Lord that we can know the road and we can pass there? Then you will hear a small voice at your back telling you, this is the path of the Lord. I pray that your ears will be open when God is speaking, Amen. that your spirit will be open when God is instructing, Amen. that you will hear his voice and you will not miss his voice. Amen. You will not miss his voice in concerning your career. You will not miss his voice concerning your marriage. Amen. You will not miss his voice concerning your job you will not miss your job you will not miss his voice concerning where you where you must stay amen in 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 acts chapter 17 god determines where we must stay at a point in time he programs it it is in his plan it is in his agenda it is in his program so he knows what he wants to do i pray for you today you will not miss the plan of Jehovah. Amen. You will hear his voice clearly. Amen. Now, if I want to follow God's will, I want to follow God's design, and I listen to my heart, and I listen to God's spirit, the next third thing is that I must pay attention to how God wired me. Wow. How God created me. He gave me gifts which is different from another person. So I know that me, I have a gift of speaking. And so the best thing God can do with my life is to use my vocal organs to be a blessing to somebody. Somebody's best gift is to use his feet. And so he's a good kicker of balls and he plays well. Somebody's best work he can do is to use spanner and screwdriver to untie and to tie things. And so that is his skill. Somebody's best skill is that he uses his mind to draft and plan the design of buildings, the design of items. And so that is his skill and that is his plan. And so in life, what we understand is that you must understand if I must walk in the will of God then I must look at how God has wired me I used to hear people say what every man can do a woman can do I came today to to demystify it it's not everything a man can do a woman can do God created all men and all women equally but he didn't create all of us equitably mm. uh. all of us are equal as human beings but we are not equitable in giftings the gift of a man is different from the gift of a woman and don't be misled politically don't be misled by your stomach 
and tell yourself that what a man can do, a woman can do, is a lie. <coughs> because even the person sitting by you has been wired in a particular way. And you yourself, you have been wired in a particular way. Your thinking is different. Your behavior is different. You are framed by the situation where you find yourself. Where you are brought forth frames your life, frames your future. And so if I want to walk in the will of God, I must watch the way I am framed up. Jabez, Jephthah, these are people, Gideon, they were framed in a particular way, wired in a particular way. And so even when they find themselves in the place where they were down, they were wired to be champions at the top. That is why I'm talking to somebody that it doesn't matter what you see around you. You are not a, you are not a chicken. You are an eagle to fly. It's just a situation that puts you where you are. You are wired in a way you are rising to the top. You will not remain where you are. The will of God is that you are seated above. You are not seated below. I pray for for you. Let the design of Jehovah yes. prevail in your life. Yes. If you want to shout and say it will prevail. It will Come prevail. on, say it will prevail. It will Type prevail. it, it will prevail. It will Type prevail. it, it will prevail. It will prevail. The will of Jehovah will prevail in your life. Amen. How do I know the will of God? Listen to your heart. How do I know the will of God? Listen to the voice of, the, of God's spirit. How do I know the will of God? You must pay attention to how you are wired. How you are wired that is in first peter chapter 4 verse number 10 how you are wired now number num number four how do i know the will of god for my life i must obey what i already know is the will of god <laughs> when okay when i talk about you not knowing or knowing something that is good or bad sometimes you may say maybe you heard people talk about it or you saw a video about it or you learned it in you learned it in school so let's go back 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 to the garden of Eden. adam and eve certain things they started doing even to produce seth Cain, abel start cooking eating food all those things and um, how did they begin it how did our fathers know that this is called pepper and when you put this amount of pepper in a food, it does this. How did they come to understand that this thing is called okro? Or this thing, when you add it to this food, it turns out. How, how did it come to understand? How did we get to know? It got to know by, you see, people's desire to know things. Experimenting things. You see, our inquisition developed that thing. So, you try, okay, let me try this thing. I, I traveled and uh, we were preparing a soup and then uh, my wife picked, I mean, now you know in Ghana you can pick a whole bunch of uh, pepper, put it inside and nothing happened. And the person said, one, just one pepper, one pakushito, the gang call it pakushito, just one, cut it into two and use half. <laughs> and that half, when we are even eating, everybody was doing blowing air. Why? Because that pepper is pepper. It's called cayenne pepper. It's pepper and cassa. It's not the one in Africa. So how how did people develop that? Now you must all you must obey what you already know. There is something imbibed in man. There is something created inside man. That is that you know you don't even need anybody to teach you. Watching nature itself tells you that there is a God, and so there is something inside you that drives you to obey God. The reason why you do the opposite is because there is another thing Paul said in Galatians chapter 5. He said that there is a flesh, my flesh and my spirit are always fighting. One wants to overcome the other. And so when what I do is that when I fast, I bring down my flesh. Let me take this opportunity to introduce you to our match in, in, our, in, in, our, in our prayer. We call it wrestling in the coming month wrestling in the coming month of june we are doing 30 days of wrestling you can't miss it for anything <coughs> that was just by the way and so you struggle when you fast you struggle with the flesh and the and the spirit are struggling one wants to overcome the other one wants to overcome the other one wants to overcome the do you see how you like you like coliko you know what is called coliko fried yam in this lockdown you see how you are eating and you see how you are enjoying yourself. See how many sausages you have eaten up to this time. 
you 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 take a bread and you put chocolate spread, granola spread, margarine, and you add an egg and you put it together. I said, Blessed be the Lord God who have set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you don't know that you are getting yourself close to obesity. And the next thing is that you are getting yourself close to have a sickness called diabetes, pressure. And the next thing is to run to a pastor. Pastor, pray for me. Somebody came to me once and said, Pastor, I've been diagnosed of kidney stones. And, and uh, I said, the stone is, I feel it at my back here. I want you to pray. Pray over communion. When I drink it, it will disappear. I said, my sister, what did the doctor say he would do? He said, he will pray to me. I don't want to go for a prayer. When I drink communion, I say, you, I'll pray for you. But the answer belongs to the one up there. I don't, I don't take stones out of people's body. There is a God in heaven who answers prayer. So if you have, if you have, if you have treated your body illegally, you have not obeyed what you must obey. You have not done what you must do. And you think that because I am a child of God, it will not happen to me. I can jump from the story building and I will not die. It's a lie. He said, obey what you already know. By obeying that, you are doing the will of God. Let me add the last one and I leave you for this particular moment. How do I know the will of God for my life? In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and verse number 6. I love to read this. It's, the scripture is as similar as the first one I read in Psalm 37. But Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. It said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, even the color of shoe you must wear. The color of socks you must wear. In all your ways. He said, acknowledge him. And he would direct your path. I learned years ago about a certain lady. She was home and she wanted to go somewhere. And she wanted to wear a particular dress. I think a red dress or so in the evening. It was a, it was a weekend. Then Holy Spirit tell, kept telling him, don't go with this dress. Change the dress. She also felt that this is the dress I want to wear today. So she wore the dress and went to the market. And she wanted to buy some things. And so she had just squatted down just to bend down and pick the things. In the part of Africa where we live, we live in an open market system. We don't live in shopping malls where you can go buy what you want. And they wait and pay for you. You have an open market system. People have their things displayed on the ground. So you squat, you, you point what you are. So she has squatted to buy the things. For all she realized, a mad, mentally insane person came from nowhere, grabbed her, and had a kernel knowledge of her. And everybody who was standing there ran away. Because it was vigorous, it was... Now, the dress she wore that day had something to do with that thing. Are you understand what I'm talking about? Listen, when you... He said, but when Bible says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Pastor Michael, how do I know the will of God? That is what I'm talking about in prayer. You must listen to your heart. Listen to God's voice. Pay attention to how he has wired you. You must obey what you already know in life that this must be obeyed. Then you must walk with God diligently, step by step. Anytime you want to move a step, say, God, is it your will? God, should I do it? God, shouldn't I do it? God, should I go? God, shouldn't I go? God, should I say it? God, shouldn't I say it? When you let him lead you, he directs your path. I want to lead you into a prayer today. And your prayer is that, Lord, I don't want to miss my road. I don't want to miss my life. Wherever you are right now, you want to join me in a 
30 seconds prayer. Shout and say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father order my steps. Order my I don't step. want to make a mistake. In the name of Jesus, come on, lift a prayer to God. Oh, Nama Dodi Awadol, Nama Yedi Awayeru Ade. I don't want to make a mistake, oh God. Oh, Jehovah, oh, Jehovah, oh, Jehovah, oh, Jehovah. In the name of Jesus, life is in sections, life is in tens. If you miss it, it must go round again and come another time. I pray that anybody who has missed his time, God will give you a right time again. Amen. That as you are listening to me right now, whatever made you miss the design of God, you will fall back into the line of God. Amen. I pray for special grace over your life. I pray for the hand of God to make manifest in your life. I speak over your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. That he that abides and makes things possible, he will make a way for you. Amen. I pray that you will walk in all your ways. You will trust him. You will walk with him. You will walk with him and he will direct your path. Amen. I pray for the grace to be under his will over your life and over what you do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray pray I pray for somebody right now you are thinking should I have three babies should I have seven babies you are thinking should I work in that company should I work in that company it looks like this one is lucrative I pray tonight that the grace that comes from his word will hit you where you are and I speak over your life right now that you would walk according to his will. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, I call it done. Amen. Amen. Thank you for making time to watch our SMS service. We are getting ourselves charged for our 30 days fasting in June. We call wrestling. I invite you to be part of it. But no penalty, we meet on Tuesday mornings saturday evenings and sunday evenings it is a non-denominational fellowship and so you can come no matter your church come let us pray and believe god and so i'll make sure i'll see you next time when you come in the name of jesus christ we bless god for this sms our ministry is thrived our ministry goes far by your support in the kingdom of god and it's a good time for you to support the things of God and give an offering like you go to church and give an offering. So it is time to bless God with your gift. Right now, you see the numbers of our, our media numbers, of our Momo numbers, and all the short codes projected on the screen. Look at it immediately, pick them, send an offering right now. And it's not only for now, even during the week, you could still send an offering. We are ready to receive that gift. And we pray for God's blessing over your life. As you are getting your offering ready, let me pray with you with that offering in your hands and in your heart, on your mobile phones right now. Get it set and let's get doing. You want to pay it into our church account. The church account will be projected right now and you can put it there. You can sew it there. It could be in dollars. It could be in CDs. We'll be putting both our foreign accounts there and our local accounts there. Pick it up. Send offerings to it and it will be a blessing. I'm praying for you right now. Father, bless all those who are fellowship with us on this um, virtual means and pray for your blessing as they support your kingdom with this offering. We ask them to be blessed in whatever they do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Alright, God bless you. Keep sending your offering. Keep sending the offering right now. Keep texting it. I'm waiting for you. I'm praying for you. Waiting for you. I want to see your prompt on our, on our channels right now and pray with you. God bless you for sending that offering. God bless you for giving us that huge amount. We praise God for your life. 
and now as you have given and blessed the Lord can I pray with you right now as I close for today's transmission hope to see you tomorrow afternoon for a hot prayer time Heavenly Father I pray for all my friends and pray for all those that are joining us today we desire to walk in your will order our steps in you in Jesus mighty name I call it done let this week be a blessing to everybody that fellowship with us in Jesus mighty name Amen, Amen. can we share the grace of God together may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore Amen God bless you I will see you again on Tuesday in Jesus name Amen